to start off our analysis for part A, question number one. So the amount of aluminum we started with, 1.014 grams. It's a little messy there. Um, so we did all this stoichiometry here. And after a long series of stoichiometry, as you can see, we led us to our final answer of 17.99 grams, which is the theoretical yield. For our, for our alum crystals, yeah. For the alum crystals. So, number two. Actual yield. So, our actual yield turned out to be 15.70 grams. And... We need to find out our present yield. And all right, so for uh, oh crap, question three actually, we have uh, the factors that are affecting percent yield uh, within our uh, calculations. Because obviously we didn't get 100 percent. So what's the uh, what's holding us back from that? So obviously we have human error as probably the main cause as far as the weighing and maybe writing down a number wrong here or there or something like that or getting some extra you know, substance in our uh, in our calculations there. Um, also there's another uh, factor is that the substances when you know being transferred from glass to glass or the components were not completely transferred that some residue was left over or maybe excess uh, residue was transferred but it was not supposed to be there things like that. Also there's the chance that the equilibrium um, Within the uh, within the reactions, maybe did not go to completion or uh, was not completely figured under the circumstances. Uh, that's another factor that we have to uh, take account for. And kind of backtracking here to number four, where uh, we were asked to write a variety of net ionic net ionic equations uh, as far as um, aluminum and potassium hydroxide using. Uh, this compound over here uh, with aluminum and four um, OH, OHs uh, and also hydrogen gas. So after uh, after balancing, you know, obviously basic solutions, uh, strong base with aluminum, um, this uh, yields as balanced uh, the equation here. Next equation we were uh, asked to write was uh, that between hydrogen gas, hydrogen ion, sorry, and uh, ALOH4, uh, where this yielded aluminum hydroxide. Uh, shown here, uh, oops, sorry, here, uh, uh, a pretty simple equation yields uh, water as a result of this uh, reaction. Uh, and these uh, go to completion also. Here we have aluminum and uh, Excess, excess hydrogen ions, which yield Al, uh, aluminum, and um, six water molecules. Uh, this in turn, uh, this reaction uh, for D, where it was between um, alum, uh, potassium ions, and sulfur ions, um, and water, and the uh, AlH. H2O6, which eventually led to our um, our uh, alum here, where we have our hydrate with you know potassium, all of the components together yielding one result, and as this is um, known as the the actual synthesis reaction. So as our uh, slideshow here, I guess continues, we'll be discussing what the characteristics of a uh, synthesis reaction are. So. Uh, when in a synthesis reaction, usually a single product is formed from multiple reactants, as shown uh, in the reactions beforehand. Uh, in a synthesis reaction, energy is released in the form of heat or light, usually, and uh, the reaction is usually as exothermic. Moving on, uh, the uh, question six is asking us how how solubility and uh, temperatures were used in our experiment and. In step eight of our experiment, we uh, boiled off, um, boiled off our solution to create the alum crystals. Uh, it was boiled down and reduced to a volume of 50 milliliters, where the heat allowed the ionic compounds to dissociate and allowed um, allowed the uh, alum to to form as the ions were freeing the solution. Uh, moving on to solubility, 
we we know that alum is hydrophilic, so in the end we had to use ethanol to dry the water water soluble crystals as they were washed. Also, um, because of the reduction in reduction in, in uh, space and volume, the solution became more saturated, and as the solution cooled, um, the the uh, uh, as I said before, the solution becomes more saturated, so the crystals form and uh, basically condense and form and uh, form the crystals that we see now. So, now we move on to number seven, the crystal description. So, these crystals consist of when all, uh, when they formed, so they're, they're somewhat large crystals. There's a there's a few of them kind of scattered around, but they're mostly clear or white in color. Um, for the most part, they had flat, cleaved faces, um, and then you could probably see that a little bit in the video. They had stair-like shelves. They, you know, they kind of like bumped over everything, and but they're also water soluble and they're brittle as we crushed them up. Yeah, like so. just like a lot of uh, ionic compounds are. So. Yep, and so that's that's pretty much the description of the crystals. Part B. All right. So in part B, um, uh, the first part was us being asked basically is what what proves that are uh, that we created the actual alum, the uh, the crystals that we want to form. Are they are they really what they are? So um, the melting temperature for the crystals is ninety two point five, but uh, when we did it, we actually got ninety six point zero. So it's it's different. Uh, maybe not. Showing that their crystals is like exactly not not as close as we want it to be, but it's somewhat close in the ballpark, I guess. Um, as we calculated our water hydration, um, we took into account the the masses and uh, you know all the all the variables that we knew were involved. We could fi then figure out that water did water the amount of water molecules that were in uh, the solution, well, that were in the crystals themselves was relatively similar. Through our calculations, we figured out that it was relatively similar to um, to the actual uh, equation. Um, and the percent sulfate we calculated out was uh, ours was forty three point eight eight, but uh, the actual or the theoretical, I guess, was forty point three five, which when when compared, when subtracted and then divided by the act the theoretical again, we have a percent error of eight point seven five. So, uh, based on all of this, we can, all, everything is somewhere in the ballpark, um, more than others, but I think we can, we can say that we've created, a, we can create an alum solution, or an alum, the alum, we, can, we created what we needed. Alright, so, um, the next question asks, uh, what other tests that we were, didn't use in this experiment could we use to determine, um, the alum composition or, if if it's even alum at all, so uh, one these are just uh, some various uh, tests that we could use, kind of a hypothesis, I guess. But uh, we could figure out, um, as far from an equilibrium standpoint, uh, if this matches up with uh, a baseline equilibrium that's already been calculated. Like we could use different concentrations, different molar concentrations of the alum uh, in in some sort of solution. Um, and and uh, put it with um, maybe some uh, potassium ions or aluminum ions and have some sort of common ion effect where whether or not the solution will or whether or not the how the alum you know reacts and um, is affected by what ions we add and the concentration of those ions we add could determine the the composition of the alum or if it's alum at all also when alum is added to a neutral solution, like a neutral water solution, and it dissociates, as we know, because it's, because uh, it is water soluble. Uh, well, how the pH changes, we could off that we could um, make an assumption to uh, its composition and uh, the alum itself. We could also uh, test, in some sense, the viscosity of alum in uh, in solution compared to that of water or other um, solutions. Uh, this is one we haven't really used that much in class and is kind of 
I guess a wild card, if you will, but is uh, could be a viable source um, to determine uh, if alum uh, is the type of alum that we want to create. All right, so here is the last question that we're asked, and basically asking us, based on the accuracy of our melting temperature, uh, based on just that stat, would we say that this this what we created was actually the alum that we uh, we intended to make? Um, based on what we have, so like I said before, um, it's the melting temperature is is supposed to be around ninety two point five, but uh, in actuality, our actual melting temperature was closer to 96.0 degrees Celsius. So when this is calculated, we find that we have a 3.78% deviation. Where these numbers look far apart, but a um, 3.78 deviation, that, that percentage is, is not that high. So a, a slight deviation like this is not, is not, uh, is characteristic and is may it shows that this is possibly the alum that we were trying to make, but um, there also may be factors like human error involved, and maybe we read it at the wrong time. So this number could in actuality be closer to this, and the deviation could be lower. So based on this, I think there's a, a somewhat safe chance of saying that this is the alum that we created, and the melting temperature shows that.